This is Apollo sat in line. The final pressure is Fine Armstrong and all. Supervisor Bill. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. On that fateful day of July 16, 1969, a momentous event unfolded on the Florida landscape as the colossal Saturn V rocket, a true testament to American engineering prowess, cast an imposing shadow on the eyes that beheld it. Amidst the anticipation, the Apollo 11 mission stood on the precipice of a historic journey destined to carve its indelible mark into the very fabric of human history. However, Amidst the grandeur of this monumental feat, it is worth pausing to contemplate the extraordinary findings these intrepid explorers returned with. From the captivating moon rocks to the intriguing dust samples, each of these treasures carried the weight of humanity's inaugural encounter with an alien environment. Journey with us as we examine the Apollo 11 mission, retracing their footsteps, looking into the moon relics and what they mean, how Neil Armstrong prepared. To venture into a never-before-explored territory, one needs to understand the condition of the place, the possible dangers, and the consequent health risks in order to be fully prepared. Neil Armstrong had spent more than three years preparing for his mission to the moon. During that time, astronauts had to undergo various survival training, such as desert, jungle, open sea, and Antarctic survival. In those days, it was more of a sink-or-swim approach, where individuals were dropped in remote locations with minimal supplies to see if they could successfully navigate their way back before embarking on a moon mission. Armstrong had to gather and study rock samples in the vast Grand Canyon, explore ancient volcano formations in the Nevada National Security Site, and examine gas and lava vents, lava lakes, and pit craters in different locations across Hawaii. In order to adapt to the conditions of microgravity, he had to undergo extensive training to learn how to walk sideways. This involved being strapped and suspended at an angle, simulating the experience of walking along walls. Armstrong's physical limits were also put to the test through a strict diet and sleep schedule. In space, he would only have access to beef and vegetables that had been previously dehydrated and packaged. On July 20, 1969, before the blast-off, Armstrong was provided with a hearty breakfast to fuel him for the mission. His meal consisted of steak, eggs, toast, juice, and coffee. This was a low-residue meal, meaning it was designed to minimize the need for him to use the restroom soon after consumption, conquering the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Although the Moon is one of Earth's closest neighbors, the average distance that puts them apart is still a whopping 384,400 kilometers. It took a total of 109 hours and 42 minutes for Neil Armstrong to successfully reach the surface of the moon in a specific region known as the Sea of Tranquility. In order to reach this destination, he had to travel a distance of 240,000 miles. Despite having the option to choose other landing sites such as the Ocean of Storms or the Central Bay, the Sea of Tranquility was ultimately selected due to its advantageous attributes. These included excellent visibility, a relatively smooth terrain, and the ability to reach it with minimal use of propellant. During the descent, when Armstrong was approximately 500 feet above the lunar surface, he had to manually maneuver the spacecraft to ensure that they would not land in a hazardous crater. He carefully hovered for around a minute and a half, skillfully moving the craft sideways until he felt confident enough to make a safe landing. As soon as the lunar module touched down securely, Armstrong promptly communicated with Mission Control based in Houston, Texas by radio. Upon landing, his now iconic message, The Eagle Has Landed, was transmitted back to Earth. How Apollo 11 made it to the moon and back. The remarkable Saturn V rocket, responsible for propelling the Apollo 11 spacecraft beyond the boundaries of Earth's orbit, underwent a series of transformations before achieving its ultimate purpose. As the rocket reached its final stage, known as the S-4, it separated from the CSM, also known as the Command and Service Module, and underwent a 180-degree turn. This maneuver allowed the Command and Service Module to successfully dock with the LM otherwise called the lunar module forming a unified spacecraft. 
With the S-4 rocket left behind, the CSM and LEM embarked on an awe-inspiring journey spanning approximately 250,000 miles to reach the moon. After several days of travel during the translunar coast phase, the spacecraft gracefully entered lunar orbit. During this phase, the crew dedicated a substantial amount of time, approximately 25 hours, to meticulously inspecting and testing various systems aboard the spacecraft. These meticulous preparations were crucial in ensuring a successful landing on the lunar surface. While Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin transferred to the LEM, Michael Collins remained in the CSM. Once the separation between the CSM and LEM occurred, these two vehicles functioned independently. Consequently, the CSM was given the name Columbia, while the LEM was designated as Eagle. With the CSM and LEM functioning as separate entities, the Eagle initiated its descent orbit after an astonishing 102 hours and 45 minutes of traversing through the vast expanse of space. It was an unprecedented moment when Eagle became the first manned spacecraft to touch down on the Moon's surface. Once safely situated on the lunar landscape, Armstrong and Aldrin meticulously conducted thorough systems checks and made necessary preparations for their groundbreaking moonwalk. Astonishingly, 109 hours and 42 minutes after the momentous launch, Neil Armstrong became the first human ever to set foot on the lunar surface, delivering his iconic words that resonated throughout history. Shortly thereafter, Aldrin joined Armstrong on the moon's surface, and together they embarked on collecting valuable samples and conducting groundbreaking experiments. After spending just under one day on the moon, the Apollo 11 crew, including Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, prepared to leave the lunar surface. Their lunar module, named Eagle, ascended from the moon and successfully rendezvoused with the command module, Columbia, which had been orbiting the moon. Once docked, Armstrong and Aldrin were reunited with Michael Collins, who had remained in the command module during the lunar landing. The ascent stage of the lunar module was then discarded, and the command module entered the trans-Earth injection phase, beginning the journey back to Earth. As the command module approached Earth, the service section of the spacecraft was ejected before entering the Earth's atmosphere. Finally, after a total time of 195 hours, 18 minutes, and 35 seconds since departing from Earth, the command module splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24. This marked the end of their incredible journey, having traveled a distance of over 800,000 nautical miles. Space Race Between the U.S. and the Soviets During the tense and charged atmosphere of the mid-20th century, the world witnessed a captivating rivalry between the two superpowers of the time, the United States and the Soviet Union. This rivalry extended far beyond geopolitical conflicts and spilled over into the vast expanse of space. Known as the Space Race, this period was characterized by intense competition fueled by technological prowess, scientific curiosity, and an overwhelming sense of national pride. The space race was ignited on October 4, 1957, when the Soviet Union, under the leadership of Nikita Khrushchev, astounded the world by successfully launching the first-ever artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. This tiny beeping orb not only transmitted radio signals, but also showcased the Soviet Union's technological advancements, shaking the confidence of the United States, who found themselves trailing behind in this celestial contest. In response, the United States, under the administration of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, announced Project Mercury in 1958. This initiative aimed to establish America's dominance in space exploration and provide a fitting response to the Soviet challenge. The Mercury 7, a select group of astronauts carefully chosen for their skills and courage, became the face of America's quest to conquer the unknown and usher in a new era of American ingenuity. However, that was not all. The Soviet Union had an ace up its sleeve in the form of Yuri Gagarin. On April 12, 1961, Gagarin achieved a monumental feat by becoming the first human to orbit the Earth aboard Vostok 1. This triumph dealt another severe blow to American morale, prompting President John F. Kennedy to make a daring announcement on May 25, 1961. In this historical announcement, 
President Kennedy declared that the United States would set its sights on an even more audacious goal, putting a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth before the end of the 1960s. This ambitious objective, later known as the Apollo program, aimed to restore American pride, surpass the Soviet Union's achievements, and showcase the limitless possibilities of human exploration. Simultaneously, the United States formed the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, which played a pivotal role in the nation's journey to the stars. With NASA at the helm, the United States embarked on a mission to prove its capabilities and establish itself as a leader in space exploration. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, Sergei Korolev, the brilliant mastermind behind their space program, labored tirelessly on their lunar mission. However, the Soviet program was shrouded in secrecy, which unfortunately led to tragic setbacks. The untimely death of Korolev in 1966 dealt a devastating blow to their lunar program, further tipping the scales in favor of the Americans. Both nations experienced remarkable achievements and heartbreaking setbacks in their respective endeavors. The Apollo 1 fire in 1967, which claimed the lives of three astronauts during a ground test, served as a somber reminder of the inherent dangers of space exploration. Yet despite these setbacks, both superpowers persisted, motivated by a combination of the other's successes and failures. As the years went by, anticipation grew and nerves were constantly tested. Finally, in 1969, the world held its breath as the historic Apollo 11 mission unfolded before their eyes. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's groundbreaking footsteps on the lunar surface marked a resounding victory for the United States in this high-stakes race. Armstrong's iconic words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, resonated deeply, capturing not only the pinnacle of the space race, but also the shared dreams and aspirations of humanity as a whole. The immensely challenging endeavor of preparing Apollo 11. The conception of Apollo 11, driven by political ambition and scientific curiosity, was not a simple undertaking. It required an immense level of preparation and attention to detail. The unprecedented task of landing a man on the moon demanded the utmost precision in every aspect. From the rigorous training of the astronauts to the ingenious design of the spacecraft and spacesuits, every element had to be carefully considered. Thousands of miles away in Florida, the colossal Saturn V rocket, the symbol of America's lunar ambitions, was being constructed. Designed by Verna Von Braun and his team, this behemoth stood at a towering 363 feet and was built to carry the astronauts and their equipment more than 238,000 miles to the moon. The meticulous assembly of this technological marvel involved countless engineers and technicians working tirelessly around the clock. Every bolt and wire was checked and double-checked to ensure the safety of the crew. The crew underwent intense training in a variety of simulations designed to replicate the harsh conditions they would face. Armstrong and Aldrin spent countless hours in the lunar landing training vehicle known as the Flying Bedstead, mastering the complex maneuvers required for landing on the moon. Meanwhile, Collins focused on mastering the intricate systems of the command module, ensuring that he could safely return the crew home. The heroes of this epic voyage were none other than Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. On January 1969, they were selected as the prime crew for the mission. Armstrong, the mission commander, was a seasoned test pilot who had already demonstrated his cool composure during the near-disastrous Gemini 8 mission. Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, brought his expertise in orbital mechanics to the team. Collins, piloting the command module, was tasked with the daunting responsibility of navigating the lonely path around the moon while his comrades descended to the lunar surface. The preparations for the Apollo 11 mission were not without their moments of tension. For instance, just weeks before the mission, concerns arose about the weight of the lunar module. One potential solution that was suggested involved removing the reflective insulation layer, which played a vital role in maintaining the temperature inside the spacecraft. After much deliberation and intense discussions, it was ultimately decided that this layer would remain, and instead, other components of the lunar module would be lightened. This decision showcased the meticulous attention to detail and commitment to safety throughout the preparation process. 
One of the more extraordinary yet crucial aspects of the preparation involved the development of the lunar module, which was affectionately dubbed Eagle by the crew. Unlike any previous spacecraft, this two-stage vehicle was specifically designed to function in the unique lunar environment. It had to be lightweight, yet durable enough to withstand the harsh conditions of the lunar surface. The brilliant minds at Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation, led by Tom Kelly, the renowned father of the lunar module, met the challenge of this design with their innovative thinking. However, the preparation for Apollo 11 was not solely focused on the technical aspects of machinery and the capabilities of men. It was about something much larger. It was about preparing the entire world for an event that would fundamentally reshape our understanding of ourselves and our place in the vast universe. The news of this mission spread like wildfire across the globe, capturing the imagination of millions. The Manufacturing Process of the Saturn V The manufacturing process of the Saturn V was an incredibly complex and challenging endeavor. It involved multiple locations across the United States, with different stages of the rocket being constructed in various parts of the country, spanning from California to Louisiana. These stages were then brought together and assembled at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. One fascinating aspect of this process was the transportation of the rocket stages. Due to their enormous size, they could not be transported by road. Instead, they were carried on a barge named Palamon, which made its way through the Panama Canal, covering thousands of miles in the process. The science behind the Saturn V is a testament to human ingenuity in overcoming the colossal force of Earth's gravity. In order to achieve escape velocity, which is approximately 25,000 miles per hour, the rocket needed to burn vast quantities of fuel. A mixture of kerosene and liquid oxygen was used in a controlled yet powerful explosion. This release of energy propelled the rocket upwards, following Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. On November 9, 1967, the Saturn V had its first unmanned test launch, leaving an indelible mark on history. As the rocket roared to life, its power could be felt miles away. Windows rattled and spectators watched in awe as the flaming behemoth ascended into the sky. Rocco Patron, NASA's Director of Launch Operations, vividly described the scene, stating that the shockwave rolled across the water, up the beach, up the pad's built-in flame deflector, and through the launch tower to the waiting spacecraft. It was a sound that was not only heard, but felt. In summary, the conception and execution of Apollo 11 was an immense and complex endeavor that required meticulous preparation, training, and engineering. The determination and expertise of Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins, along with the dedication of countless individuals involved in the construction of the Saturn V rocket, paved the way for the historic achievement of landing a man on the moon. Unveiling the Saturn V rocket One of the most awe-inspiring aspects of the Saturn V was its F-1 engines. These remarkable engines, the most powerful single-chamber liquid-fueled rocket engines ever created, were a testament to Von Braun's design principles. A total of five of these behemoths were mounted on the first stage of the rocket, collectively generating a staggering 7.5 million pounds of thrust. This immense power was enough to lift the entire structure off the Earth's surface and set it on its trajectory toward the moon. However, the Saturn V was not just a symbol of raw power. It was also a masterpiece of intricate design. Consisting of three stages, each with a specific role in the mission, the rocket was a marvel of engineering. Once a stage had completed its task, it was discarded, making way for the next stage to take over. The first stage, known as the SIC, was responsible for the initial ascent, propelling the rocket approximately 42 miles into the sky and reaching an astonishing speed of 6,164 miles per hour. Just imagine the sheer size and power of the mammoth machine known as the Saturn V rocket. Standing tall at 363 feet and weighing a mind-boggling 6.2 million pounds, this colossal creation possessed the force of a small nuclear explosion. It was this extraordinary mechanical titan that propelled Apollo 11 toward the moon, making the seemingly impossible lunar landing a reality. 
Without the ingenious engineering behind the Saturn V, this monumental achievement would have remained nothing more than a distant dream. Following the SIC, the second stage, known as the S2, took over, pushing the rocket further into the Earth's upper atmosphere. Finally, the critical task of placing the Apollo spacecraft into Earth's orbit and propelling it towards the moon fell upon the third stage, known as the S-6B. The birth of the Saturn V, much like the mission it was designed to support, was a remarkable combination of audacious ambition, scientific innovation, and an indomitable spirit of adventure. At the very core of its design was the brilliant mind of Werner von Braun, a gifted German-American scientist. His visionary approach to rocketry was rooted in a philosophy that prioritized power and reliability. In conclusion, the Saturn V rocket was not just a feat of engineering, but a testament to human ingenuity and determination. It represented the culmination of years of scientific research, innovation, and the unwavering spirit of exploration. With its awe-inspiring size, immense power, and meticulous design, the Saturn V played a pivotal role in making the historic Apollo 11 mission a reality. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. It has been way more than two decades since Neil Armstrong made his iconic statement and supposedly became the first man to set foot on the moon. However, there are those who question the authenticity of the lunar landings, suggesting that they were nothing more than a fabrication by the U.S. government. These skeptics argue that the United States, driven by the need to outpace the Russians in the space race, staged the entire event on a secret film set. This supposed set is said to be located either high in the Hollywood Hills or hidden within the mysterious confines of Area 51. However, NASA has more than enough evidence to prove that the Apollo missions were not staged. Some of the evidence includes rocks, moon dust, and other relics that are well preserved at the Lunar Sample Laboratory. Now look at this photo displayed on your screen. Does it look convincing enough that these are relics from a world different from ours? What do you think about the speculation of the moon landing being faked? Let us know in the comments section. Looking into the moon relics. During the historic Apollo 11 mission, various items were utilized and possessed by the astronauts, contributing to the significance and memorability of this monumental event. Among these objects were a pen and pen light, serving as essential tools for the crew's mission-related tasks. Additionally, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins had in his possession personal items such as a toothbrush and sunglasses which accompanied him throughout the journey, symbolizing his role and responsibility in the mission's success. Adding to the collection of memorabilia was an iron-on Apollo 11 mission badge, representing not only the crew's achievements, but also their dedication and commitment to the mission's objectives. Also, a copy of the front page of the Washington Post, specifically dated July 21, 1969, was included among the artifacts. This newspaper served as a historical record, capturing the extraordinary moment when humanity first set foot on the moon. Additionally, a government handout detailing the in-flight menu provided insight into the dietary provisions and nutritional considerations for the astronauts during their space journey. Furthermore, Remnants of space food were preserved as samples, along with the very scissors used to open these meal packages, providing a tangible connection to the sustenance consumed by the astronauts during their time in space. Also, the toothbrush and sunglasses employed by Michael Collins, the command module pilot, during the momentous mission are also preserved as valuable relics. These personal belongings provide a glimpse into the daily necessities and routines of the brave astronauts who embarked on this extraordinary adventure. Additionally, an assortment of leftover space food samples, accompanied by the very scissors used to open the meal packages, are also part of the remarkable collection of Apollo 11 artifacts. These remnants from the astronauts' meals not only showcase the innovative technology used to provide sustenance in space, but also serve as a tangible reminder of the immense effort and preparation that went into ensuring the success of the mission. During the span of four years, from 1969 to 1972, a total of six Apollo missions were successfully carried out. These missions not only achieved the remarkable feat of landing astronauts on the lunar surface, but also resulted in the retrieval of an impressive amount of lunar rocks and core samples, 
In fact, a staggering 382 kilograms, equivalent to 842 pounds of these extraordinary specimens were brought back to Earth. To ensure their safekeeping and facilitate further research and analysis, the Lunar Sample Building located at Johnson Space Center serves as the primary hub for storing and studying these invaluable Apollo samples. The Lunar Sample Laboratory serves as a facility where unspoiled lunar samples are meticulously processed and readied to be sent to scientists and educators. Every year, an impressive quantity of approximately 400 samples are disseminated for the purpose of conducting research and facilitating educational projects. These samples encompass a wide range of lunar materials, including pebbles, sand, and dust extracted from the lunar surface. Ongoing exploration and analysis of rock and soil samples collected from the moon have been instrumental in unraveling the mysteries surrounding its early formation as well as shedding light on the origins of not just the moon, but also Earth and the inner solar system. President John F. Kennedy's involvement. In every great endeavor that humanity embarks upon, there are always a few individuals who possess extraordinary vision and become the guiding lights of the journey. The Apollo mission, which can be considered the boldest voyage ever undertaken by humans, was certainly no exception to this rule. A diverse and eclectic group comprising scientists, engineers, and politicians came together in a unified effort, pooling their talents and expertise with the common goal of forging a path towards the moon. Leading this audacious endeavor was none other than President John F. Kennedy himself, whose visionary ideals were encapsulated in his courageous proclamation to Congress in 1961. In this proclamation, he boldly declared that it was the nation's choice to embark on the journey to the moon within the span of a decade, all while acknowledging the immense challenges that lay ahead. It was not the simplicity of the task that motivated Kennedy and his team, but rather the sheer difficulty of it that propelled them forward. His audacious challenge breathed life into America's lunar aspirations, forever etching his name in the annals of the space race's history. German-American engineer Werner von Braun. President John F. Kennedy undoubtedly put in all his weight into the success of the lunar missions. However, it was not within the walls of the White House that the essence of the Apollo mission truly resided. Instead, it found its home in the lesser-known confines of NASA's research facilities. Among the numerous influential figures within NASA, one stood out as a pivotal player in the success of the mission. Werner von Braun, a German-American engineer. Von Braun's contributions to the Apollo mission cannot be overstated. His unrivaled knowledge and expertise in rocketry were instrumental in achieving the historic moon landing. It is through the tireless efforts of individuals like von Braun that the world witnessed one of the greatest achievements in human history, the successful journey of Apollo 11 to the moon. Von Braun was not just an ordinary engineer, he possessed an extraordinary combination of scientific brilliance and imaginative thinking. Prior to his involvement with NASA, he had already made a name for himself through his contributions to Germany's 5-2 rocket program during the tumultuous years of the Second World War. It was his genius that served as the driving force behind the creation of the Saturn V rocket, a technological marvel that stood as tall as a towering 36-story building. Katherine Johnson the African-American mathematician. The successful completion of this remarkable voyage was not solely dependent on political will and scientific genius. It necessitated the tireless efforts of a multitude of committed engineers and workers who labored diligently behind the scenes. Among these unsung heroes was Katherine Johnson, an African-American mathematician whose calculations played a pivotal role in guaranteeing the secure path for Apollo 11. Despite facing the challenges of racial and gender discrimination during the time she worked, Johnson defied societal barriers and rose above them with her extraordinary contributions. Her remarkable achievements were duly recognized, and she was bestowed with the prestigious Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2015. Margaret Hamilton, lead software engineer. One other significant individual who may be less recognized but equally crucial was Margaret Hamilton. She held the position of lead software engineer for Project Apollo and led a team responsible for crafting the onboard flight software utilized during the Apollo missions. 
A notable moment in history captured Hamilton in a photograph from 1969, where she is seen standing beside a towering stack of code that she and her team meticulously authored by hand for the mission. The stack of code was nearly as tall as Hamilton herself, highlighting the immense effort and dedication put into their work. This instance also showcased the magnitude of Hamilton's code as it was put to the ultimate test during Apollo 11's lunar landing. Just moments before this critical event, her software effectively intercepted and corrected a potential command error, ultimately saving the mission from potential failure. In addition to the prominent political figures and brilliant minds at NASA, there is a group of individuals who often go unnoticed but deserve our utmost admiration. The supporting cast of countless technicians, engineers, and administrative staff. These individuals were the unseen hands that played a crucial role in shaping the Apollo mission. Day and night, they worked tirelessly, leaving no stone unturned and ensuring that every minor detail was accounted for. From President Kennedy, who provided the vision, to the anonymous technicians, each person contributed to turning the lunar dream into a remarkable reality. It is important to recognize that the Apollo mission was not solely the triumph of a person, but the victory of these untold heroes who dared to reach for the stars. Their collective efforts not only transformed the course of history, but also reshaped our understanding of what is possible when humanity dares to dream beyond the confines of our home planet. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.